is Tim Hurley, and I am here with Harmony Kelly, Woo! the bass player for Kenny Chesney. She is in my stomping grounds in Playa del Rey, and <laughs> you're playing SoFi Stadium tonight. What are you doing here? I, well, I, you mean hanging out with you? Or, <laughs> That's, come on, man. We're a little pregame. It's great. Well, I, was, I have a good friend um, who actually used to tour with us in uh, Manhattan Beach. And so anytime you're on tour, you have to take, I mean, you know this, just like you have to take moments away from the bus from the hotel, from the venue to just like be, a, you know, out with yourself. Nobody so seems today, to do it better than you. I oh think. my God. Today <laughs> was one of those days for sure. And I had a girlfriend in town. So she and I have been just kind of bopping around Manhattan Beach, That's going awesome. to brunch, shopping, nice. sticking our toes in the water and the sand. So yeah. <laughs> well, I would nice. offer you a Mai Tai, but I, probably, I don't want to get into trouble tonight, you Listen, know, on stage. I, know. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta stay relatively sober for the, <laughs> for the show. Love it. Well, let's get to your background a little bit. Yeah. You're obviously on tour with Kenny Chesney. Yes. Where are you from originally? How'd you get into music? Let's cover the basics. So I am originally from Austin, Texas. Born and raised in Austin. Well, so I was born in Shreveport, Louisiana, but I've been in Austin since I was like three years old. Okay. So I went to middle school, high school, college. That's like another unicorn. Not a whole lot of people from Austin these days, right? I know. It's true. (laughs) It's kind of like Nashville too, where it's like we have a lot of people who are there, transplants from somewhere else or just there for a period of time and then going on to somewhere else. But sure. I am from Austin and um, yeah, I started playing bass when I was like, Gene, (laughs) Gene, your food's ready. Uh, (laughs) I started playing bass. Oh, that was Gene right here, by the way. Oh, that was Gene. (laughs) Gene, I'm glad. Um, (laughs) I started playing bass when I was um, 17 years old and I just, it sort of called to me and I was a big fan of Guns N' Roses when I was in high school and and I loved Duff and I wanted to be Duff and I wanted to be in a rock band. And so I asked my parents for a bass for Christmas and I got it. Was and that your very first instrument then? Yeah, it's my Tim. I'm not going to lie to you. It's been kind of my only instrument. Really? You know, yeah, I didn't start on guitar or keys and then move to bass. I started with bass and I've always played bass and I actually have a drum kit at home. Okay. That would be probably the second instrument that I'm most comfortable on. But um, that makes sense, yeah. right? The rhythm section. I'm Get a it, rhythm you know. section gal, like <laughs> through and through. So, um, and then I just started playing and I sat on the living room floor and picked out bass parts and listened to records and CDs. So cool. Never went to music school. I never really took lessons. I just kind of. You're making a whole lot of people really jealous out there. They're just like, they're like, yeah, we really don't have to do anything. You just kind of pick it up at 17 years old, start playing, and then you get to tour with one of the biggest acts in the world. You get to play at SoFi Stadium in LA with Kenny Chesney. And, you know, that's the end of the story. But so, how did you start getting the music scene in Austin? Is absolutely incredible, obviously. But it's a a different animal than the Nashville scene, obviously, different animal than a stadium scene. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, I don't know. It's weird. It's one of those things when you think back on your life and you're like, where did it all begin? Because at some point, there was like a point where it started to like snowball and the snowball got bigger and bigger and bigger and then you know you get to the top of the austin music world you know and then you're like what do i do now um but i played with some great people and i just kind of cut my teeth there and like there was a drummer in particular who i played a gig with and he we really connected and clicked and then from that he would recommend me for this gig and then I would play with those people and then they would recommend me for it. So it just, it just all kind of started happening. And I was playing with, um, there's this guy, Bob Schneider, who's really big in Austin and we toured around the country a lot. And I played with fastball. Oh, that's Um, cool. I know. And played with some great singer songwriters like James McMurtry and people like that and Radney Foster. And so, and then at some point I got an opportunity to move to Nashville and you know, what a tough market to break into, right? Because oh you're coming from Austin. Nashville is so incestuous and yes. you got to know the right people. And you got to get yes. in. So how did you land this gig? I got I had a good friend of mine who was um, she was playing bass for Hank Williams Jr. Oh, at the time. That's pretty cool. And she was going to become a mama and she needed somebody to kind of step in and, you know, be there while she had her baby. And, um, you know, so that kind of brought me to Nashville and I didn't end up staying in that gig. And then there's through meeting people there. And, you know, I kind of got another opportunity to audition for this gig. Um, and it was a very closed audition, as you can imagine. It was like, what was that process like? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm getting anxiety. Just thinking <laughs> it, about I know, like, <laughs> something it was on that crazy level <laughs> because I had never, 
audition. I mean, I'd really never auditioned in the way that they audition people at this level. So how did they do that? I can't even imagine what that process would be like. And it wasn't like an open casting call for bass players. It's not like they put, you know, an ad out there on Craigslist or something like that. Obviously, I can't imagine why (laughs) they basically went to everybody in the band and said, okay, we need to fill this position. Like everybody come to us with a name. And so it was a really, really closed audition. And so my name got thrown into the hat. And I think I was one of five, maybe four or five bass players. Wow. But that's was, still like, tough. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I didn't meet anybody. It was all very like we had our time slot and we went in and did all that at um, Soundcheck, I think, in Nashville. And um, then they recorded it on like an iPhone. And then they sent we. we so was Kenny learn, in the room? Not for the first audition. Okay. Yeah. So we each had to learn like five or six songs. And um, then they recorded it and they sent all everybody's videos to, to him. And he got to choose the person that he wanted to come back in and do a second. Audition. Very cool. And so I when they sent you the songs, uh, not sorry to talk over you, but no. when they sent you the songs, did they just give you the name of the song or did they actually give you a reference track? So you knew the exact they, part to play. You know, no, they just they just gave me the, the names of the songs. And and it's like so I'm a traditionally just a four string bass player like okay. I always have been like that's how I learned that's all the gigs that I ever played were on four string okay and then fast forward to me getting this audition and listening to the songs and going mm, okay I feel like this definitely calls for like a five string bass and I'd never really played a five string bass oh dear <laughs> and it's a totally different instrument so how long did you have before oh the God. interview like or a, before the audition a few weeks Okay. And so basically <laughs> I borrowed one from a very dear friend and then, um, and I didn't tell him what I was doing. I was just like, I'm thinking about buying one. Can I borrow yours? So I borrowed his to get comfortable. And then I ended up renting one from like SIR <laughs> in yeah. Nashville. It's like so embarrassing. Cause it's like so absurd that I would be up for this audition and not really know how to play. Not even own bass. the instrument yeah. that you're auditioning for. It's a little ridiculous. That's so, awesome. <laughs> but I kind of like, I mean, there's a testament to like just showing up and pretending like, you know, what you're doing and sure. you know, confidence is everything. And I walked in and had my five string bass and, you know, and then I didn't own in ears, which most people in Nashville, I mean, own their own molded. If, if you don't know in your monitors, monitors are yeah. headphones, basically, so you can hear the instrument that you're playing. Yes. Yeah. And so everybody, you know, you already have them molded and I didn't own a pair. And so I showed up and our monitor engineer, Opie, who I love, he was like, I said, I don't have my own in ears. And he was like, it's okay. It's okay. I've got like these generic ones. So he wasn't passing judgment no, there. He was cool not at all. He was totally wow. cool. And they knew, I think they could sense how nervous I was, <laughs> you know, as anybody would probably be. Yeah. But he had these little generic ones with the foam in and you stuck them in. And I swear to God, the entire audition, I was like, I'm not getting this gig. Here I am on a five string bass that I don't typically play. I've got these generic in-ears in. They keep falling out. I'm supposed to sing. (laughs) There's background vocal parts and play bass on an, I mean, everything about it said you should not get this gig. And then I got the gig. So so. what do you think? What, (laughs) what got you the gig? Do you think? Well, I, there's historically, sometimes it's not the, the, the most, I'm not going to say it's not positive, but sometimes as a woman in the music industry, that's very male dominated. Sometimes you can get looked over or people assume that you're not as good or that you don't know what you're doing on your instrument or whatever. In this case, I think it really like worked in my favor because um, he had just recorded this record with Grace Potter singing a lot of the background vocals on it. And so I think for him, it was like they needed somebody that could sing because their, their other bass player didn't sing at all. Um, but then I think the, uh, the option of having a female background vocalist who also played bass was cool. And then I think for him, he's super smart, right? So like to have a lady bass player up on stage is like a totally different look, especially in the country world. There aren't a lot of female bass players. Sure. So, you know, it was a calculated move on his part. All right. All right. So- <laughs> <laughs> Has he ever told you that? specifically or, or well, are you just kind of you know? I'm just kind of assuming and because there are a million bass players and some of the guys that I uh, that I found out later that I auditioned with are some of my good friends and they're amazing bass players and of course I have that imposter syndrome of like they're way better than me sure. I don't know what I'm doing um they're gonna find out at some point that I'm a total fraud <laughs> these are all things that go through our well, mind it's been a few years musician. now I, I think know. you're in the clear <laughs> I think you're in the clear it's true but I think for this gig, I, now I can say this, I am the right person for this gig, you know? And I used to be kind of like, how did I get here? You know, why, why did I get chosen? But it all made, when you see the show, 
it all makes sense. Yeah, and know? it is the show is incredible. It's I'm, pretty great. Uh, you go I to know. a Kenny show, and uh, people know I'm a big fan, but it's obviously just uh, the performance factor is so yeah. key and it's not a huge production right there's yeah. like no pyrotechnics nope. there's it's just you know you get the video the yep. jumbo but that's pretty much it yeah there's no moving set pieces or yeah pyrotechnics or like it's we don't even really it's not a track heavy show like there's a lot of shows that you would go to right. where it was like so much so much track and synth and you know music that you hear where you're like you don't know where it's coming from because it's not actually being played on stage yeah so for those of you who don't yeah. know they're backing tracks which yeah. basically just play music in the background off of a computer a lot of times the drummer is the one who controls yep. that yep and uh, so there isn't a lot of that we at have a Kenny show. some but really it's like what what you hear is a singing it's us playing it's you know and there's some noticeable stuff like these you know kind of airy swooshy things that happened in a couple of songs but that's really it but know? it also allows you to be a little more free right yeah. and then and improvise and be spontaneous yes. during the course of a show which yes. is, i think the audience responds to whether or not oh they even God. realize it <laughs> it's <laughs> you know? crazy too because this year we have a couple of new band members um which has been bittersweet but now it's like the band is this, we have a new drummer and I, I mean he's just such a like joy to play with because every night is different you know he's not he's never going to play the same fill <laughs> that might drive somebody crazy I love it. <laughs> but I'm kenny like, is kenny just like i don't he, know where to come he, in he loves it too you know because it's just like it's so much energy and it's so dynamic and so every single night we're all just we're watching each other and we're listening and we're paying which is what a band should be doing but at this level sometimes when there's so much going on and you're listening to a click track and like it can become like not autopilot but it's like it becomes the show and you're out you're doing your thing and you're doing your part but like for this it's like we're all watching each other and listening like constantly, which is, so and you're cool. communicating with each other on stage as well yeah. too. Right. Yeah, so yeah, you can yeah. actually talk to the other band members through it's the music. So, oh yeah. And I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of shenanigans that go on and we <laughs> each have our little like nine one one mics that the audience can't hear. And really therefore, you know, if I break a string or if something happens and I got to get in touch with my bass tech without the audience knowing, then I go to this little microphone, but like, 85% of the time it's like jokes and people <laughs> laughing and like ribbing somebody for playing the wrong note. Like it's all kinds of stuff. And Kenny makes, we all make mistakes. Just the other day we were playing in, um, I think we we're in Bend, Oregon and he, um, we were playing American kids and he started the song singing the second verse. Oh dear. And we were all like, <laughs> uh, okay. And he was like, wait, 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 wait. Oh, he did he start the song over. Did he yeah, really? Yeah, oh, awesome. that's such a cool moment. But it's then. so cool. Cause it makes him real. Yeah. You know, and it makes him like accessible and he's human. And how bad know? of a script could that have been? Right. If he just went with it, you guys would have to make the adjustment in real time. Would you then just play through it as though it was the first verse or we, would you try and adjust to make it? Yeah, the second? we would probably get to the second verse and I'll be looking going, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? And then, <laughs> but, you know, it's like you get to play with each other for so long that you kind of know you can read people's body language and we know him really well and so you kind of know what he's going to do and where he's going to go and but i kind of love that he stopped it in the middle of the That's show incredible and like, you know what let's start this over I those just are the stories you, you'll share I for years it. right after that so, <laughs> so what's the biggest screw up you've ever had on stage oh, that you've me? ever had yeah Ooh, gosh man that's a good question I mean, you definitely You're like, like there's so many, there's so many, Tim. <laughs> like, but you know, you play little, which we all call jazz notes as musician. When you play a wrong note on stage, like the keyboard oh, player hilarious. will always, why it'll come on and be like, that was a great jazz note. Harm. And I'm like, all right, thank you. Play like eight notes but, to recover. Yeah, right? exactly. Or sometimes you play the, the wrong note again, twice to make it look like it was like intentional. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, yeah. I've definitely made definitely made some mistakes have there ever uh, been repercussions as a result no. of that do you ever get the look back or uh you know honestly the... <laughs> no i mean if i do get the look back he's usually laughing oh that's awesome which is great like he i cannot like express to you guys how cool of a boss he is you know because sure. everybody always says oh is he as cool as he seems yes he's <laughs> absolutely as cool as he seems like so he never he just never cracking the whip no i mean you know it, really he's like, especially when we get into rehearsals, he's almost more concerned with lights and video and content and stuff that's playing as far as like for the show part of it. Because once the band is where we rehearse without him for like two weeks. So then when we come together, like the show, our, our part, the show is ready, you know, and two so, weeks, how many hours a day? I mean, maybe four, four, yeah. five, you know, it just kind of depends if we're introducing new material or if we're just like for, like this year 
we had a two plus year break. You that know? must have been a bizarre reemergence into music. So strange. We played our last show in May of 2019, and then we had gotten together to rehearse in you know February of 2020. Sure. And then we we rehearsed for I think we went to play a private show, and then we came back and we were going into full scale production rehearsals. And then that Friday, the 13th of March, was when COVID was like that. So everything was shut down. They sent us all home, and they kept thinking like we're going to postpone it. But did you ever feel like your job was in danger? In the last couple of years? I mean, not in a, I knew we would come back, but it does get to that surreal place where it's like, okay, the thing that I love to do that is like, I feel like is my purpose doesn't exist right now. Sure. And there's nothing that anybody can do about it. And so, and then you're just waiting and waiting and waiting longer. And no one thought it was going to be two years, you right. know? So we were very excited to come back this year. So when we got together to rehearse, it was like, how did these songs go? Yeah, knock the rust yeah, off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely, there was some dust that was getting kicked off. But, you know, here we are. Here we are. I so know. back to the performance factor a little bit. You yes. have such an incredible stage presence. And a lot of the musicians really? with Kenny, yeah, you're like, ah, don't worry. <laughs> uh, but, you know, a lot of the musicians that play with Kenny do. Yeah. Was that something that you had to learn or was that very natural to you? No, it, <laughs> it was not natural to me at all. In fact, I came from a... Um, you know, I was like the bass player that stood back by the drummer and like locked in with the drummer. And maybe I even had a mic back there for sometimes I was at the front of the stage, but like there was never like, you're never going to see me like jumping off of a thing or like running around or like high-fiving audience members. I, like it was doing none of that. And so come when here, I got come here, gig, sorry to interrupt you. Oh, this no. is Tiffany. The, Hi, come Tiffany. here to get in the camera here. She's the queen of Playa del Rey. This is Harmony. Tiffany, get in here. Hi. <laughs> Nice to meet you. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you there, no, but she's no. the best. So. I love it. Nice <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> I was never the run around kind of bass player. You know, I was very, I was like energetic and animated, but like still kind of reserved, you know, because sure. I didn't think it was my place to sort of do all that. Right. It was like, that's for the front person. Right. And then and I got some, this kid. some artists yeah. would probably be they'd tell you to pump the brakes a little exactly. bit and take the back seat because they don't want you to upstage them or whatever. And then I got this gig and the band leader said, you know, one of your roles, because we're all wireless, so there's no cord that's tethering my bass to an amp or anything like your role, aside from playing bass and singing is to go out and, and sort of like fill all this space on the stage, sure. you know, and run around, interact with Kenny, interact with the other band members, sure. like the audience. So, yes, it's been a, a totally different um, world for me. And there have performer. to be some nights where you're just not feeling it. Yeah, totally. Right. How yeah. do you get yourself to a place where you can interact with the band, run that's, around and put on the show? That's the hard thing is that like if you're not having a good day or if you're tired or if you're hungover, <laughs> which I'm never, never. <laughs> uh, it can be hard to like muster up that like will to just like do it. But then you look around and you're like, OK. I'm at like a football stadium wherever, you know, in Seattle or Kansas City or like, this is my job. Like, come yeah. on, man. Like, <laughs> get, get it get together. It together. <laughs> and so, yeah, you just kind of like, and it always ends up being fun because then ultimately you feed off the energy of the crowd. Sure. And they're never just standing there looking at you. So it's hard to look at people who are just like roaring, you know, and just be like bummed out. So it always comes together. Oh, you know? so cool. Yeah. So you're, it's show day. It's show day. You're playing SoFi Stadium tonight. I know. But you're hanging out on the beach. We're in Playa del Rey right now. You had love it. brunch in Manhattan Beach. What is, is this normal on a show day for you? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> like normally, and we got here Thursday, we got here Thursday afternoon, I guess, because we came from Bend. Played our show in Bend, Oregon on Wednesday, got on the bus immediately and drove basically all night and part of Thursday. Sure. So we've been here since Thursday. We had sound check yesterday, got to see the stadium for the first time. For How us. cool is it? So, oh, my God. It's beautiful. <laughs> no joke, it's right? so cool. So the sound check um, is the night before the show? Yeah, usually for a stadium, they'll set up on Friday and then we'll go in and sound check and just, you know, make sure every and this this one in particular, our front of house engineer who's amazing robert <laughs> scoville who used to be with tom petty for like 30 years oh, wow. um he's our front of house sound engineer and so he's never done a show here we've never done a show here and it's kind of an unusual like roof 
situation. Sure. So I think for him, he wanted to get in and it's LA. So Sounds bouncing be, in different areas. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. You want it to be like the best it can possibly be. So. How crazy is it to then walk out on stage and the first time you hear yourself play a note is in front of, you know, 50,000 plus it's people. Nuts. It's, it's got to be well, really weird. Is that first note? Does it freak you out? Do you still get the I butterflies? Mean, I it's still it's really, really cool. I would say the thing that gives you the most like, woo, is when you're backstage with the bass or the instrument on and they have this big uh, Austrian curtain that goes down that comes down. And then the moment that like the intro music comes on and you can hear the roar of the crowd without your ears in and you it, it like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like how incredibly big the place is that you're playing. Cause sometimes when you have the in-ear monitors in, you get, it's not, I mean, they do have audience mics that are filling a little bit, but it's kind of like being in a vacuum. You can't really sense. Yeah. It's way more how, subdued probably. Yeah. Yeah. So without those in at the beginning, it's like, holy shit. I don't know if I can say shit. On I this. think it will. Beep. beep. <laughs> We're going to test my editing skills, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's, pretty outrageous is this the pinnacle of your career or what do you see for your future who who if not kenny then who Gosh. would you like to be on the road with and you're a vocalist too maybe is there a solo project coming out i you know i don't know that's a good question and i have all this time like we get done with the tour at the end of august and then you basically have september through february to kind of explore whatever you want to do so sure. i end up going back home to austin and playing gigs with all my friends so which cool is great but everybody always asks me like are you gonna do are you going to, you know, are you writing or you were going to record? And I do want to do that at some point. So it's just been, um, I'm just happy to be back on the road doing this. But if I, the problem is the two people that are sort of my, like, I would love to play with them are no longer with us. Uh -uh. And that would be David Bowie or Prince. David Bowie is a great oh my one. Gosh. Yeah. That's I know. all time. But, but <laughs> I have to say like playing with Kenny is like, there's really no, I mean, we play football stadiums and I'm trying to think of like what the comparable, I mean, the stones, maybe you too, maybe, but like, but so you like that, that kind of level is, is what's well, feeding you, right? I mean, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's a really cool <laughs> thing. You can't be. imagine it. Yeah. So it's wild, but that's not, I mean, I don't come from that place, right? I come from like small rock clubs, you know, loading a van, driving across country with five other people sure. and like, you know, schlepping gear and all that stuff. So I love that. And that's what I always go back to. So it doesn't necessarily, I just don't know what I would do if I wasn't playing with Kenny right now. There's no one that I can think of that I'd be like, Oh, I wonder, you know, but it's a pretty good endorsement for I Kenny. Know. the man. <laughs> I, I adore him. He's like one of my favorite people. So to be able to play with him is it's so cool. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I love well, it. I've taken up a lot of your time. You no. probably got to get to the stadium. Are you coming to the show tonight? I'm definitely coming to the show tonight. I won't miss it. And for years, I always close out my summer at Gillette Stadium. Usually go to oh both shows gosh. there. So that's, I'm from Rhode Island originally. So that's, that's been a, a those are fun shows. It's been a staple long before I was in country music. That's so it's been really awesome. fun to see it, you know, transcend. But how can people find you on socials? Because you're you're not making. I feel like you should have your own brand, by the way. Like I'm, I do. I think really? it should be. Yeah, we're gonna talk. It's. I, okay. I think we're gonna do some some swag, some gear. You should get your own merch table. I like Because uh, you got such a look and such a presence on stage. Aww, I think it'd be really good for you. That's but, a really good idea. But you're, All and right. I should mention your socials are incredible. If you want to follow people behind the scenes, which is partly what this you know podcast is all about yes. you really show off like what's going on you show off your off days yeah. and you show the back you know the performance uh perspective yeah. from like backstage i mean it's so fun to watch well, and i think it's cool for people to who are fans of kenny that hasn't always been the case you know like there's a couple of guys in the band that are sort of active on social like instagram and stuff like that but overall you know not really sure and so my whole thing is like if i was a fan of this person like wouldn't i want to see what what do they do all day what do they do backstage <laughs> what does it look like at a sound check you know like what so i think it's cool to show all that stuff and it gives them something that they can't see when they come to the show and it's, really it's so cool. easy to do you know and i love sharing that stuff too do so. you have a lot of aspiring bass players reaching out to yeah, you yeah that's the cool thing it's like i either on instagram or facebook or live at a show like after a show and it's a lot of like women and then it's a lot of like younger like the the people who come with like their 12 year old daughter or sure. something and then they're like, I didn't know that a girl could do that, you know, and especially in country music, you know, it's like, there aren't, there are a lot of 
female vocalists, maybe some like uh, multi instrumentalists, but there aren't a lot of female drummers and bass players. Sure. And so it's like when you see that on stage as a young girl or a grown woman, it's like, oh my God, I didn't think that that was a thing. And right. now I'm seeing that it is, you know? So I definitely get those people come up to me like, you've inspired my. 12 or 13 year old daughter to want to play bass. That's now, incredible. Or pick up the guitar or whatever, you know, how, like, that's gotta be so empowering it's for you. It's so great because for me, it's like, that's how I started. I, I didn't know that you could do that. And I wasn't even like the fan of a female bass player. I just picked up a bass and thought, why not? You know? So if I had like a female role model, oh my gosh, I would have started <laughs> earlier. Where, where, yeah, you'd be playing football stadiums uh, earlier. Exactly. <laughs> I think you've done it. Exactly. Well, what are your, what are your social handles so people can follow you? So I'm on, um, I think it's just Harmony Kelly music on Facebook. It's Harmony with an I and Kelly with EY. And then I'll make I'm sure to Instagram. post that too. So yeah, we can see it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just at Harmony Kelly. And so I do, a, I do most on Instagram, I would say. And I don't even have a TikTok account, man. I was just talking oh, to my friend God. Deanna. I'm like, do I need a TikTok <laughs> account? She's like, honestly, you can do everything on Instagram. Maybe you start doing reels, which I do want to start doing. So well, you probably should get a TikTok because, you know, the younger generation oh that are gosh. following you, that's probably what they're exactly. going to use to see it. But All right. I'm getting a TikTok. Love guys. it. You've heard it here first, people. Breaking <laughs> news, groundbreaking news. But Harmony, thank you so much for making the trip. So cool so to have happy, you here in my Tim. backyard. This is so great. And yeah. can't wait for the show tonight. Break Me a too. leg. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. All right. See you next time.